Hello everyone, let's look at the new features and changes that Microsoft is rolling out with the November 2025 update for Windows 11 version 25H2 and 24H2. Before proceeding, note that when the company officially releases the November 2025 update, it only marks the beginning of the gradual rollout of the new features, meaning that not everyone will get the same changes on day one. It could take some time until these improvements become available to everyone. Also, some features may require specific hardware and some others may be restricted depending on your location. If you don't receive one or more of this feature, now you know. One more thing that I wanted to point out is that Microsoft can always delete or cancel any of these changes at any time for any reason. So these are the features that are on the list, but it doesn't mean that they will roll out in the next cumulative update. First, starting with the November update, the company is finally rolling out the new start menu design. So after installing this update, you will notice the new start menu, which you will either like or not. Now, the new layout combines the all apps page with the pin section, as you can see right here, by default, all the apps are grouped in category, but you can switch to grid or the legacy list. One thing to note is that the menu will change size depending on the screen resolution. Now, as a result of this change, if we go to the settings app, more specifically to the start settings, we're going to notice that the page has been updated. So we no longer have the layout settings. And if we enable these features, we're going to see the recommended section. Now, if you don't want that section to appear, just disable these options. So now we're able to finally get rid of that recommended section. Now, if you have your phone connected to your computer and you enable the show mobile device in a start, you're going to notice that at the top right, there is an option to show and hide the menu. Now, let me know in the comments if you like this new layout compared to the previous version. Now, starting with this update for versions 25H2 and 24H2, we are going to notice that the iconography for the battery icon on the taskbar has been updated, and now it uses different colors to describe the state of the battery. For example, the green icon indicates that the computer is currently charging and the battery is in good condition. Now, if you see the yellow icon, then that indicates that the computer is running on battery power and has entered into the energy saving mode. This mode will automatically activate when the battery level drops to 20% or lower. Now, you might also see the red icon and that indicates that the battery is super low and you need to plug that device into a power outlet to prevent unexpected shutdowns. Now, if the icon is black or white, that just indicates that the computer is running on battery. Now, if we go to the settings app, and then if we go to the power settings, starting with the November 2025 update, we're going to see that now we have the battery percentage option to show the battery percentage next to the battery icon on the taskbar. Now, the new iconography and the battery percentage will also show in the lock screen. So if we lock the device, you can see the new iconography and the battery percentage on the bottom right. Now, in this update, Microsoft is also rolling out the recommended section on the homepage, which replaces quick access. This feature has been available previously, but it was only available for managed devices. Now it's available for personal Microsoft accounts and local accounts. As you can see, I don't have like any recommended files at this time. However, if we go to the folder options on the general tab, we're now going to see the show recommended section and the show files based on your account and cloud provider activity. So if you have those two options, then you should be able to see the recommended section. So for example, if I don't want to have this feature on File Explorer, I just need to check off these two options, click Apply, and then you can see that now we get quick access in these two tabs. Now, if you have file recommendations, this is how thumbnails should look on your computer. Now, this section will surface content including files that you frequently use, recently downloaded files, or those that you have added to the gallery page on File Explorer. Now, another feature that Microsoft is touting with the November update is the new controls, as you can see right here, when hovering over files on the home page. So hovering over a file, you can now open the location of that file with this button, and the Copilot button will send that file to the Copilot app. And finally, as part of the File Explorer improvements, Microsoft is making available the storage provider APIs that enable cloud providers to integrate their storage products into the home page. Now, if we go to the settings app, Microsoft is renaming the email and accounts page to your accounts. Now, 
if you usually use voice access starting with this update you will be able to use the fluid dictation feature that automatically corrects grammar punctuation and filler words as you speak you can enable or disable the feature by going to the settings for voice access and then look for the option under manage options this feature uses a small AI model already available on the computer, enabling offline operation and preventing your information from being sent to the cloud. You can also use the turn on fluid dictation and turn off fluid dictation commands. You can also use this feature on any app that support text input, but it won't work on secure fields such as those for passwords and pins. Now, as part of the improvements, if you go to the settings menu, you're also going to find a new waiting time before acting feature that allows you to configure the delay before a voice command is executed. And these are the different timing that you can select. Another significant feature coming to Windows 11 with the November 2025 update is called Administrator Protection. And it is disabled by default, but there are two ways that you can enable it, including using Intune and Group Policy. In the past, the company also showed this feature in the Windows Security app. However, at least at the time of this recording, that option only appears on the group policy settings for Windows 11 Pro. So in order to enable it, you need to go to group policy. And then we need to go to Windows settings from here, Windows security, and from here, security settings. And let's drill down to security options. Then we need to scroll down until we find the configure type of admin approval mode policy. Now we just double click this and I already enabled it on the computer, but the default will be just the legacy user account control. But if you want to enable it, you need to choose this option. Then click apply, okay, and restart the computer in order to see it working. So now the next time that you need to run an application or a command that requires elevation, you're going to see this new administration protection in action. So for example, let's open command prompt. And in here, you're going to see the Windows security message instead of the user account control. And from here, you can allow the change to elevate the specific command. So how this is better from the user account control? Well, first, this new method requires to authenticate using Windows Hello before you can do anything. Also, this feature uses the principle of list privilege. So basically, it creates an isolated administrator token using a separate administration account in order to execute an elevated command without affecting your actual profile. So one thing I noticed is that this feature is still under development and it doesn't work uh, correctly. So let me just show you on a different computer that this is the default user account control that we're used to. But then on group policy, after we enable the administrator protection feature and we restart the computer, then when we try to run an application that requires elevation, we're going to notice the new administrator protection dialog. But again, even though we are able to use Windows Hello to authenticate, we can still see that the dialog box still needs work. But you get the idea on how this feature works. I just remote it in into my Copilot Plus PC. And right now I will try to show you the new changes that Microsoft is testing or wants to add to click to do. And one of these new features is selection mode. As you can see right here at the toolbar for click to do, we get the rectangular selection. And this mode allows you to create a rectangular selection. So when we click that button, we can select using a rectangle. And from there, we're going to have access to the different actions that we can take on that selection. Now, we can also use the freedom selection. And this mode allows you to use your finger or pen or the mouse to draw around an item and select it. Just like using the tools from the snipping tool. Now, a part of the improvements for click to do the company plans to add a copilot prompt, as you can see right here, to the context menu where you choose the actions for the feature. And this will make it easier to interact with the chatbot using AI. Additionally, the new menu will display prompt suggestions using on device AI models, as you can see right here. Furthermore, Microsoft is also updating the actions menu to suggest translation for selected text. Now, if on a particular snapshot, you 
are selecting a table. Click to do will now recognize that it's a table and it will give you the option to convert that table into an Excel table, but you will need to have the latest version of Excel installed on your computer with a Microsoft 365 subscription. In addition, if you have a snapshot that includes information for someone in your organization, you can now hover over on that information, such as an email address, as you can see right here, and that will display the, the Microsoft 365 profile card for that particular person, as you can see right here on the screen. But of course, this is only for commercial customers. And finally, you can also press and hold two fingers on the screen to bring up click to do in addition to using the Windows Q keyboard shortcut or using the Windows N mouse click to open the same interface. And I almost forgot, but on click to do when hovering over or selecting a number with a unit and you click on that selection, now click to do will be able to do the conversion. And this works for length, area, volume, weight, temperature, and speed. And also starting with this release of Windows 11 for version 25H2 and 24H2, Microsoft is updating the initial setup to allow you to set the user folder name for the account that you're going to create while setting up Windows 11. So if you're in the Autobox experience on the sign in page, you can now use the Shift F10 keyboard shortcut. And yet, Microsoft is now actually adding an option. You actually have to use commands in order to do this. So in here, we need to use a CD command and open the OOBE directory, and then we need to type the set default user folder, that CMD command, and then we need to specify about the name. They have to be up to 16 characters. So for this, I'm just going to type this, and then I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, the command was able to set the folder name for the user that I'm about to create for Windows 11. So from here, you can just close the console and just continue with the setup process. And then after the setup, when you go to the users folder, you're going to find your user account folder with the name that you specify. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that it appears that also starting with the November 2025 update, that it's when Microsoft is going to roll the changes to block popular workarounds in order to bypass the creation of a local account during the out-of-box experience. You can actually check the video description to find a link to a tutorial that I have created with different methods that are still working if you want to set up Windows 11 with a local account. And now, just for context, the workarounds that we know that Microsoft is blocking at this time is the bypass NRO command and when using the star MS CXH local only command. Now, for the features that Microsoft did not mention that, that are likely to be introduced with the November 2025 update includes the ability to show the emoji button right on the assistant trade. So as you can see right here, we can click and access and access the emoji panel without having to use a shortcut. Also, if we go to system advanced, we're going to find the option to enable the long path for file explorer. And that's it. Those are the biggest changes that Microsoft will be rolling out on Windows 11 version 25H2 and 24H2 for November 2025. As I said before, remember that the company can always cancel or delay any of these features. Now, let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.